at the okay yeah I'm Young Choi I'm a professor at the uh, for the University of Calumet and then uh, the uh, will actually lead the uh, dossier work with the bird watch today and uh, the wildflower but as you know spring is kind of late this year so I don't think there will be a lot of just the flower out there instead the we will actually more focus on the just bird watch I have extra binoculars so mm -hmm. we'll just all there okay okay what's okay. the route uh, route is going to be we're gonna cross the street and then we will uh, just the uh, up north all the way to the fourth dice just walk that the park okay so there is a walking path so on that path you will see some of those the uh, the wetland uh, that was restored by the army corps engineers and the city of Hammond a uh, couple of years ago is completed and that they actually have a plan in about the 50 those the species of native plant that is actually going to be focus <laughs> supposed to be the focus of the work okay mm -hmm. uh, then but uh, we will see okay so how many of them actually got popped out and the flower okay. and also they have restored about the a dozen of island within the lake so we're not gonna just actually get onto the island, but uh, on the island now that that becomes the major habitat for the uh, bird, okay. yeah, particularly migration, migratory as the bird there. So we'll see, okay, some of those. Th this is probably really good season to see that kind of those just migratory birds, okay, on the okay. path. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. so my background is the. Uh, I'm uh, just a uh, professor, ecology professor. I teach ecology and the botany and the environmental science at the Purdue University of Calumet. Um, I got a degree from the State University of New York and Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many, yeah, about 30, at 1991, 1990, I came here in the 1990, just right after my degree. And then actually I did actually some uh, the uh, work the, at the Wolf Lake. One of the, my just actually connection to the Wolf Lake is the actually, and I think it was 2001, uh, the Wolf Lake and City of Hammond Army Corps actually approached me to do some any, if there is any just feasibility of restoring those wetland island on the Wolf Lake. So I actually did the initial study with that, uh, whether those just the area then actually made a recommendation. So we have to restore and what to do and what is feasible, not feasible. So they actually, based on my recommendation, they actually have just created those, just uh, actually restored those wetlands and recreated the island on there. And they, that project was uh, completed in 2007. And uh, in the last couple of years, and I went back out and actually see how the restoration actually did the work. Okay, so we actually did some assessment to work over there. And the phragmite issue? Phragmite is again still the issue. It is expanding now. So yeah, they actually re-invaded right after, okay, right after the completion of the restoration. Now then it is expanding. It is going to be the issue again. Yeah. Yeah. It's very rapid. Yeah, it's got to be controlled. And how would that be done? I don't know. It's, it's all up the city of Hammond, yeah, whether they're going to control or not. Yeah, so, but it's bad. It's getting bad. It's still maybe okay, but it's going to be very bad in the very near future, maybe in five years, they will take over the area again. Mm. Yep. Sad. Sad, sad. sad. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a little bit later and a little bit warmer. What mm -hmm. kinds of flowers did we expect to see? Uh, and then in the spring, now then you will actually 
most of the flowers actually you're gonna say is actually starting from the beginning of the summer because uh, they actually have city of hammer and the uh, army corp they have just planted over the 50 species of native plant but they are most uh, summer flowering plant and the most of the spring flowers not really many okay? but usually about this time you actually see some of those are just spring flowers, but very few. But actually, probably the best time for the wild flower work is gonna be the fall. Okay. okay. We have the just the old the golden rods, and the also we are probably gonna see some of the spider work as kind of a small flower. You are probably gonna be able to see that. Okay. So we will go go out and to see. Okay. So then also. Just the uh, all those daisies coming out in the just the summer. Mm, the most the also that just the monkey flower or lily, okay, water lily, okay, so water lily, pond lily, but that most actually coming out in the late uh, June or like that. But we are probably gonna see some, okay, <laughs> such as a buttercup, okay, and then. Uh, some of just the spider world, but I don't like that name because of pre just uh, that the flower is pretty. <laughs> but I don't know why they kill. <laughs> it's called the spider world like that. But we will just go up, okay? <laughs> 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 and also there was very extensive sand mining. Uh, they actually took the sand from the bottom of the lake. Yeah. Uh, for the construction purpose, okay. also uh, in the early first half of the 20th century, when uh, there was uh, no that much refrigerator, this was the major supply, major place for the ice supply for, for the city of Chicago. Oh, so they actually came and they just built the dike and they actually get the ice, also they took the sand out of it. Oh. And then, uh, much later, in the 60s and now we have Indiana Tollway was built. Mm -hmm. As a result now the lake was actually separated by sand. Yeah. Just the Illinois side and the Indiana side. And uh, then also for the sand mining they built a lot of dike to get access. Yeah. So particularly in the Illinois side is actually now the dissect. So the lake is very much now that was segmented. Uh, the virtually no water flow, very little water flow between Illinois side and Illinois because of the just Indiana Tollway Causeway. Only place is about the, this wide, just the path, the small bridge. Okay, mm -hmm. bridge is about the, this long, so there's a path is there's so very little. Okay, also uh, they those the here just the uh, wolf lake used to actually historically connected to the uh, just Lake Michigan, so it used to be a bay. But now we have what just the Route 41 build and the railroad build. They actually now they what they close the uh, this access. Right. Yeah. So it's now become the lagoon. <laughs> the lagoon yeah, is yeah, what yeah. kind of lake? Yeah. But it used to be a bay. Yeah. So it's actually kind of artificial lagoon became artificial lagoon because of the Route 41. Uh, so. But uh, one, so it's a very much changing. Okay? Natural character is very much changing. But in the 2001, the city of Hammond and then the, uh, the Army Corps engineer. Okay? As they do that, actually nearly all of the wetlands got disappeared. Okay? Because of that. But this is one of the prime habitat for the migratory birds. Mm -hmm. Because it's just uh, birds are flying over the Lake Michigan, they stop over here and the rest, and a lot of them. Um, but most of those people are just wetland habitats are actually gone. Okay. Uh, so this is also known as still the one of the best fishing place because uh, this bay area used to be one of the major spawning area of Lake Michigan, just fish. So they want to restore them. Mm -hmm. okay? But there's no way now that we can actually reconnect the lake. Right, right. So what actually can do, they could do, is that they actually now restore some of those wetland habitat mm -hmm. along the lake here, also recreate some island, because there was some island, mm -hmm. 
again. But Ireland were all gone because of the sand mining activity. So they recreated. And then on the top of that, they actually planted about 50 species of native plants and also on the island too. And that becomes habitat. And in the last couple of years, I actually did some study on that. Actually, I found about three dozen of bird nests on the island. So, That's really good, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so that, that, that's where we're going to go. We're not going to go get into the island because, yeah, you can actually walk through, but water is still full, so we're not going to walk <laughs> through or the, to the just island, but you can actually actually see yeah, some of those birds out there, and uh, we will see how what plants actually pop up. Okay? We're going to cross the street and walk north all the way to the fourth side. Okay? I always just want to learn more about the species and everything around mm -hmm. it. Oh, it's very biodiverse. Yeah, it's very diverse. It used to be very diverse system. Okay, this area used to have about over just a thousand species of plants. I, I'm a plant expert. Yeah, okay? yeah. about fourteen hundred and thirteen to actually that put a number of species that we had. Actually, there was actually more than the all those species you can find in the Yellowstone and the Yosemite together. Actually, it's almost gone yeah okay? could you repeat that <laughs> yeah so it's almost gone okay so now then probably out of just about over a thousand species probably you can find maybe about 70 80 species but there are some rare right, yeah? right. i do not have exact number actually there was the biodiversity or the, the uh, survey several yeah. years ago they found actually i think but still two, three hundred species. Oh, yeah. Okay, all together, if we're gonna include that. Also, there is just a tremendous change in the bird community too. Adopted this kind of a human disturbed environment. So yeah. their numbers are going up. Mm -hmm. So as we can see, they nowadays more like a nuisance. So. You grew up around here, so you've seen the changes uh, of late, bit. right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's mostly been like this. I mean, besides the construction of this uh -huh. and the water park, that's the only construction that I've seen in my yeah. my life. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. That. But a long time ago, it was a lot much bigger. Yeah. Nowadays, some of those years, now they decide not migrate. So that's thank you. Yeah. Because they still can just find the food. Right. Okay. Also, winners become not so severe, mm -hmm. useful, except the last one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when Wolf Lake started becoming like smaller, when they started uh, habitat yeah. destruction, well, uh, was that around the time you you know about like the uh, when Hyde Lake? Uh, uh, Hyde another... Lake is gone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. 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 It was the same time. Yeah. That was around the yeah. same. Yeah. Is it the same time? In the first half of the 20th century, all the way to the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. Wild grape is a flowering. So they will actually become the gray later in the fall. Yeah. So. You know what kind of uh, the bird is there or the duck there? Uh, oh, that, that is one of the migratory birds. Yeah, that is one of the just the migratory bird. Okay. So yeah, so it's a stopping over. Uh, I think that is the. Yeah, I'm not a bird oh, expert. Okay. Actually, my students are supposed to be here. <laughs> and we have uh, very rarely seen that is we have a native swan. It's called a tropical swan. Oh, okay. Usually it has the black bean. Yeah. So it doesn't have orange dot. So but that native. one is very aggressive. So they actually chase them out. And that just uh, our tropical swan is virtually extinct. Okay. Yeah, it, it is very rare. I never seen it. Okay. I never seen it. And another swan is if you come in the winter, you actually it's still rarely seen. 
we have those the uh, the tundras one. It's very much similar to the uh, similar just the, to the trumpeters one, not that one. But they actually come here just for winter, and in the summer they go back oh. to the Alaska. Okay, so yeah. Uh, uh, or northern Canada, and so it's called a tundra swan, but there's a mute swan. Okay, that was brown from you. So that is bad line. Okay. So they actually chase them. Simply. Now we have all the plants. You would actually see some of those just see. The other plant. Yeah, that terrible. happens with. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a the red or sea dogwood. It's a very common uh, native shrub, but they grow very well in the disturbed environment. And actually, oh, this yeah. is called what? Yeah, red osier. Uh huh. The dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dog. Because it has a red stem. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Native or they're not native? It is native, but for what you think. Yeah, this red. Yeah, very aggressive. Okay. Much wear some of the water. A sagi, this one has a willow, okay, they spread, very good. Yeah, oh. like this. Yeah. yeah, this is actually yeah, this is a planted this. Yeah. Okay. This is called the soft stem bulrush. Okay. So this is a native one. They planted here. Because if we're gonna just squeeze it, it's kind of a hollow inside. Mm -hmm. uh, soft stem bulrush. This is one of those planted species. But this is also problematic. This is cattail. Oh okay. yeah, this is cattail. But this is also the problem. Uh, but the problem with the cattail is actually there are two different species. One is from Europe, this one. The other one is much bigger. Okay. That is the native. But those two got hybrid. Once they hybridize, they become very aggressive. Okay. So they also just just like Phragmites. Okay. You will see that. They, they actually take over. Okay. You will see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a fragmite. This is another problem. Yeah. Um, actually, actually now oh, they look at that. So all these vegetables? Yeah, yeah, they invest it. This is actually there are about 30 to 40 different variety of this species. We have some native variety, but this is not the native variety. This is also from Europe. Yeah. This is also just from Europe. Once they get in, just look at that. They're growing very big, so they shade out. See? Right. So no other just a plant actually can live. So during the restoration, actually they actually got to the herbicide to kill all of them. They virtually kill all of them. But year after that, they're coming out and okay. spread out. And this this is last year's growth, right? Yeah, this is the last year's growth. Yeah, and this, and stuff this is... is a new growth. So it didn't do anything. Basically. No. <laughs> it, it, it is a losing game. Uh, All uh, you can do is rather than contain it, rather than eradicate it. It is important. Is this a buttercup? Or is that too small? No, this is what's the wood so rare. This is also the uh, from the uh, exotic, just uh, from Europe. Okay, so came with the farmers, European farmers. This is what the wood or uh, the hummus so well. Okay. So you know if we're gonna just uh, taste this. Uh, yeah, this is a taste this is kind of just a sour. Actually you can make a salad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sour. But you, you can make it just a salad. You can actually eat it. 
yeah. You can eat dandelions. Yeah, yeah. Too, we've right? Been, well, yeah, we've, we've actually been harvesting them. Yeah. All over mm -hmm. those the new That's fantastic. In the spring, they are edible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fortunately. Nearly all of them. I know, I was picking dandelions, and my mom was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm yeah. going to make tea out of them. Yeah, you can make tea, you can make salad, there's a yeah. bunch of I also just make the salad. You know, the green? Pieces. Yeah, so with the that, and then uh, we can soak them in the water so that you can actually take some of the bitter uh, then out of here. So maybe on a 30 minutes, and just mm -hmm. the salad is good. Yeah, so. Yeah, that one, you'll see it, the from the last year, yes, it's not exotic. Goodbye. In the late summer, okay, in the mid-summer, you would like to see beautiful purple flower. Out of it. Okay, that's it, so it's a purple loose stripe. Oh, okay, which one is it? This one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So purple like loose stripe, beautiful I purple flower. That was introduced intentionally because the flowers are beautiful from Central Europe again. <laughs> but they escape the cultivation. They're very aggressive. They actually, just one single plant produce about two, three million seeds. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they say you shouldn't yeah. try to like uh, pull them out because then, no. then all no. the seeds go everywhere. All the seeds go everywhere. <laughs> if you want to pull it out, you got to pull it out when the flower is set. But once the, the fruit is set, you should that they will go everywhere. So then how would you get rid of them? Uh, there are a couple of, number one, most common is that they put the herbicide. But, uh, contain fires yeah, yeah. too, is that yeah. possible or like that? Yeah, fires can do that, but it doesn't kill the root. Okay. And then also Field Museum actually have tried to just introduce some of those just the bugs in that, that eating on them. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. I've heard uh, yeah, effect. eating on this. So actually it has some effect on it. But one of the concerns is now you have you to control the exotic bug, to control right. the exotic right. just the or so uh, that or uh, that, that plant. And mm -hmm. the, when those bugs got just uh, effectively successfully get rid of them and what you're gonna do with the bug. Right, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember when I was in yeah. grammar school, uh, uh -huh. we did uh, work with the yeah. mighty acorns. Uh, yeah. And they, they were talking about doing the thing with releasing bugs and stuff. Uh -huh. But I remember thinking of like, yeah, like yeah. what would be the yeah, that of that. Yeah, very similar into the pattern in Australia in the 50s and the 70s, or 60s. Actually, they actually brought the American just the uh, the, uh Cactus. Okay. So the cactus was actually just the everywhere, and they brought the European now then just a rabbit, okay, a man, a rabbit to actually to control it. So cactus was actually controlled, uh, not the moss, okay, but they actually went on the, their native cactus after that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Plants are smart. Oh uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> so some of the animals too. They oh, yeah, brought the European rabbit. rabbit. It's also native, yeah. Native so rabbit became a major problem. So yeah. they actually brought the fox, European <laughs> fox. So fox got the rabbit. Now that after that they got the old native animals. <laughs> they should just stop doing that. Because yeah. Yeah. The relative daisy. It is called the origin. It's the called the horse wheat. Yes, but they are actually all just in the uh, just the same family. It was a sunflower family because the each one, okay, it's a single one. It's a one single flower. Yeah, They're, that's those are all like seeds, basically. Yeah, or? basically, it's a, yeah. Even in the yellow one, oh, each wow. one is one single flower. Wow. Some flower look like this. They look like this. This one looks like this. Yeah. How come some of them turn purple? Yeah, yeah so just the simply, just the, it's the, depending on the uh, species, also depending on the uh, the temperature, uh. depending on the soil condition, mm -hmm. they actually, there's slight Complex. variation in mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, in the technical world, it's called actually ester ratio uh, or 
former name is the composite because it's kind of composite of flowers. Actually, there are a thousand of flowers together here. Each of them, <laughs> one single of them is a flower. That's the reason why dandelion is very hard mm -hmm. to control because, yeah, you got to look at the, each one actually going to make the seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Each one will just make the seed. So is this part of the... No, restoration work, or is this no, no, this shop? is just the launching area. Okay, actually, this is the original? There, there was a partial restoration, but actual restoration started from that point. Okay? So okay. We are still, yeah, still just along with it. So uh -huh. all these, like, fenced-off areas, this must not just... No, no, no. Oh, okay. this, this was the, uh, some limited restoration okay. prior to this project, okay? But you would actually make a restoration beyond the airport. Uh huh. Yeah, um, is there slag over there? It's awesome. Yeah, you are awesome. actually yeah, you are actually just walking on the slag. Yeah, underneath. It's all awesome. all slag underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so did they? Well, uh, there's a certain part where they uh, reconstructed the shoreline, right? Where it's not slag on the shoreline, or is that? Uh, did they did they ever do that? Or no, no, oh, they oh. actually put the, some of the dirt on the top of the just slag. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then we're only gonna put it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it virtually not possible. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we dug all those slags. Right. right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, basically working on the slag. How much soil do they have to put on to guarantee that something would grow? That's about the foot or maybe two. Mm -hmm. okay. so. so it's not really reconstruction, it was just putting... No, no. But still, it's a seven million. Right, so that's how much it costs, you're saying? That. Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah, including all the new pavement and the new, just the uh, baseball diamond. Yeah, but all together, <laughs> seven oh. million. Wow. Um, right on the lake, too. So, if people are fishing, what are they catching? All kind. Yeah, it's a really Blue good. Girls, so, very yeah, bluegills, large mouth, small mouth, even walleye. Yeah, they did some actually pre-restoration work here. The only the, the reason why they want to do it, they actually didn't want to have the further more just erosion here on the shore. Yeah. But because another issue is the now then <coughs> is out block, the outflow of the lake is actually virtually blocked, almost blocked, except through that narrow bridge all the way to the very small Indian Creek. But those Level Brothers and the Kalbia, yeah. in the engineering process, they take it, that they dump here in the Wolf Lake. They dump here in Wolf Lake? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great big <laughs> So So... So it goes through a treating process? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. So water quality is okay. But problem is the level? because of that the water level goes up. So now the shoreline gets eroded. So those the residents now they're worrying about the property damage. Sure. So they actually put some uh, the native plan to prevent okay, to just uh, block the block the shoreline eroding. Okay. So that was the pre-2005 okay, site, but actual just the, that uh, restoration started just from right over there, okay, across the bay. So that is about the seven miles. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's about a mile, okay, one and a half mile okay. of the shoreline. Oh, cyclist. <laughs> If it were, if the contamination was just a little bit worse, 
Uh -huh. What effect might that have on fishing and it, it anything depends. else? That... It depends. So how large the area is going to be. But so far, it has to, seems to me, doesn't have an effect a lot because the now then generally just water quality is exceptionally good. You can actually drink the water right away. <laughs> yeah, only thing you need is what you're gonna just filter it out just to get some of the debris just the, okay. So through the coffee filter, okay, you gotta filter it out and then you can actually drink the water. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we used <laughs> yeah. to swim in this yeah. lake. So. Yeah. yeah. Extremely yeah. good and uh, we found all the kind of indicator, those the uh, insects, okay? Those larvae, just uh, living in the bottom, they are all just indicate just, uh, just first or second class water. Okay, yeah. Good to know. Yeah, this is like the starting point. Actual, yeah, just the, the, the restoration. So is this rock here like slag? Uh, yeah, that's a slag. Yeah. The, the reason is, is it has a lot of limestone in it, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. When they actually get the ore, the way they produce the steel is they grind them, mm -hmm. right? And they actually now then to take the steel out of it, you have to what, to raise the temperature to melt it. Uh -huh. So all the steel gonna be melt. And you're gonna separate them, but oil itself is not gonna actually raise the temperature hard enough to melt everything. So they actually take the limestone. So we have a limestone curry, right? Okay. That that is supplier, limestone supplier of the steel. So just to take the limestone, also grind them, mix it, mm -hmm. and to raise the temperature. You take the steel, liquid the skin out of it. And the rest of them now they cool down and to solidify that is a slag. On a lake, like they would come to a, a I don't know, just Georgia Lake is actually only about a quarter oh, of original size. I have a, a picture yeah. on my phone right. of, of, yeah. of the map of how it used uh, to look yeah. compared to how it looks now and it's uh -huh. so much more. You got Hyde Lake that's completely right. gone. gone. Lake Calumet looks so yeah. much smaller. Yeah, so much smaller, it's all slack. So it's very much look like a concrete because we have yes, it does. limestone powder in there. Yeah. Limestone powder actually got just a solidified. Obviously things can't grow. Yeah, because the, we also yeah. make the cement out of limestone, right? Lily pad. Usually around the lily pad, it's really muddy. Oh, okay. You sink. <laughs> okay, you're not gonna be able to get out. Okay. <laughs> along the just a lily pad. And some of the island, when they actually build the island, those countries they support to scrap the bottom from all over the lake and collect the sand, make the island. But what they did is they scrap only just one around the island. So if we're getting closer in some of those just island, actually it's getting deeper. Yeah. <laughs> so you also got to be careful with okay. that. Yeah, so they, they, they didn't follow oh, the they specification. Yeah, so they actually the easy way. Yeah. <laughs> uh. If we're gonna get in there, we already have a map on the nesting site. Oh, There's some yellow flowers, I think, right past. Oh, yeah. So that is what the Golden Alexander. Okay. Yeah, Golden Alexander. Oh. 
So that is actually a little poisonous. Oh, okay. <laughs> But it's not gonna be lethal, okay? Right. So you probably have some very some mild upset, stomach upset, that's it. Okay. If you actually consume it excessively. But some of those are poisonous plants, mm -hmm. they are also uh, there's uh, many of them that is also just being used as a just what the uh, ingredient of many of those medicines. Oh in and in like for like yeah. herbal medicine? Herbal um, medicine. Yeah, e even sense. even our pharmaceutical industry. Actually, you use it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So, all those medicines are basically the poison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? Yep. <laughs> poison that's yeah, true. produced by the plant. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Yeah, that, that I think that's a cop. <laughs> is, is any of this area where they put the soil on top? Or yeah, that, yeah. Okay. They, these are the dirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, these that's are the dirt the that they put the dirt. Yes. Yeah, it's a spawning time. Yeah, it's a spawning time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all over. They're just mm, all over. Yeah. That's so cool. You see, the purple loose is dry. But as you can see, they're all the phragmites is popping out. And there, I think there's right here. Is this different? This is the uh, last year's growth of goldenrod. Uh huh. Okay. This is the red clover. Again, okay, that is from Europe. Mm -hmm. They came up with the hay, uh, the just grass, okay, so just Kentucky bluegrass, your lone grass. Mm -hmm. okay, they just came up with that. This is the yeah, clover. Okay. This is the red clover because the flower head is red. And white clover is brighter, than much smaller. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. But some of the white row also has kind of pinkish color. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you gotta look yeah. at the look at the by the size of it, uh, that your flower head. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, these are the white clover. Oh, that's the bird I saw over uh, That is the red wing, the blackbird. Yeah. Yeah, usually just the build their nest in those, the, uh, here, those kind of, oh, that, that rush, bull rush, okay, inside, and they're very aggressive, okay. So, whenever just you just get to the, just their territory, they just fly, just diving to your eye, oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, I've seen them yeah. at the lake all so, the time, yeah. So that one is, I think, the male, because usually the male has a black color, and also you have very orange, just a bright orange patch on the shoulder mm -hmm. uh, during the breeding season. So okay. that is actually their mate recognition. So they actually okay. try to attract their female, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Female partner just uh -huh. with like, just with red the, with patch. The red. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And so usually in the birds, so the males are pretty, but females yeah. are not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian geese is also uh, very well adapted to the disturbance. Okay. So they are also aggressive. Okay. So yeah, they are going. <laughs> actually, those are two guys actually chase the other one. Oh. Okay. So they're bullies yeah, together. Yeah, Canadian geese, but it's a native. And the, 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 the mute one is a European, but both are common characteristic. They are aggressive. Also, they are very, they can actually even just build their nest in the evening in the park. 
Yeah. But some of the, those species actually nest of the uh, nest of the, some of the species in the islands, such as the Philippines or the Sandpiper. They are very picky and they're choosing their nest site. That, that's a problem why they are become rare and the rare. Okay. So if they do not find some really good, just uh, some of just the, the quality habitat mm -hmm. under their specification, they do not reproduce. Yeah, that one, there's another cat here, much bigger. Uh -huh. Our native one, okay? You, you, yeah, no, used to look like this. I don't know whether this is a really a native one or not. Okay, but okay? it could be uh, Yeah. And here on the other side, you have a very narrow lip, right? right. Narrow lived cattail, broad lived cattail. Right. And they actually become hybridized. Right, right. And they are very aggressive. Sometimes, actually, just it's getting taller, about four, five foot feet. Okay. But one of the just the, uh, the trick is the some of the dilemma is now they no longer you can identify them in the field. Some of the hybrid, some of the hybrid very very much look like that, that narrow leaf. Some of them very much look like what well, just a broad leaf. Some of them actually kind of in between. Right. So there's no way you can actually just identify them. But once they got the hybrid, they spread. They actually right. take over. So. What kind of trees are these? Oh, just uh, this is the silver maple. Okay, it's a very common street tree. There's uh -huh. a native, but again, grow very well on the street. Uh -huh. Right? It's this yeah, silver maple. Oh, uh, one way is you actually see this kind of indentation. This is a very deeply dissected. Uh -huh. That's a silver maple. But sugar maple is not this deep. It's more like this the indentation. This get very area. Okay. Uh -huh. It's more like, rather than V, it's more like air. Uh -huh. okay. And it's much, much more just shallow. Okay. So, yeah, this is silver maple. One of the purpose of another purpose of the restoration was actually there was a major concern with actually this is area with major contamination. This is Northern Channel. This area actually used to actually connect the Lake Michigan, but it was flood. And during the pre-regulation era, right, before the 1970s, it was not illegal to dump all the waste. So they used yeah. to dump all of them? They used to dump all of them, so there's still the sediment that's heavily contaminated. Okay. But, again, as you can see, but at the same time, there is the most popular place for the fish. <laughs> so maybe just the just well, catch and release is fine. What was dumped over there? Uh, uh, all kinds. Many different uh, types of very, chemicals. Very, yeah, toxic chemical. Very just a uh, really nasty stuff. Something is actually you can find in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So nasty stuff in the still, still it's still it's still, still, over still there. sitting in there. But eventually, Army Corps engineer they want to dredge it. Well. Problem with the dredging when they dredge it, but well, you have to stir the bottom, right? So all those contaminated sediment kind of resuspended and they actually kind of flow down here and they just threaten the water quality. So to why is it it's staying in there because it's trapped in like the sediments? Yeah, and, like, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So water quality is fine. Okay. Yeah, Grand Calumet River too. Water quality is super, <laughs> but problem is the sediment. Okay, so the, how would they be able to do it? Or you can't. They just have to wait it out. What? You can't get the, the... No, you can actually dredge them out. 
Um, but it is inevitable. Just well, just the third of them, they're gonna be suspended. They're gonna. Right? So they're not gonna be able to get all of it. It's gonna yeah, go yeah, into yeah, the water yeah, 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 and yeah, flow yeah. down. Yeah. There. So to prevent that, they actually build this wetland to trap. Okay, those just deploying sediment. Uh, this is one of the filters. So actually, uh, there is another one here. So by here and there, okay, just having that kind of a network. But here, if we're going to look at those kind of just the uh, restoration pattern and the shoreline, you see all the wetland. But this is a little bit elevated upland. This is actually, you see the prairie plant. They plant here. This is one of those prairie plants. But the little blue stem. Mm -hmm. okay. These are native? Yeah, that, oh, they are, these are all native. Okay, little just a blue stem. And this is actually, this is about the flower. Okay, so there's a cocoon. Okay. Uh, so Actually, what is this one? Pukun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Flower. And uh, this is a little blue stem. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can, they get uh, yellow flowers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and the pretty dark. Okay. So, yeah, they actually grow about just the yeah, minus six feet tall. Okay. One day, this is just a small. Yeah. But again, you can see it from the pragmatic spectrum. Yeah, they, yeah, that, that is the exact yeah. It's a problem. That's not, it's going to be a problem. You can actually see that. Mm -hmm. So, what is this? Very just, just rapidly just spread. Yeah. So, both brother see it, and also they have to spread the food. Uh, just here, just in the here, they are all just connected. This, this, all of them are actually connected by the underground just system here, underground active stem That's system. Awesome. Yeah. So, those the if we're gonna just break here and the throw in the ground, they're gonna produce the root from here. Oh wow! And the new shoot coming. Okay. So let me activate. But yeah, this is one. This is. This is. This is actually now. Okay. If we're gonna spread just here, and this, if they're gonna now then just touch the ground, root comes out of it. Oh wow! Wow, that's so. That, that's why one of the reasons. Yeah, so yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. so aggressive. Okay. If they're gonna touch roots the ground, grow out of and the same area. thing actually happen also in the underground, not just the above ground, underground too. So they're all. Yeah. Like, yeah they're all like this. Wow. The system. So this is probably just all just the, the, all of them are cloned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are the clone from just the one single plant. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a stem. So whenever you have the just a plant with a skilled stem, they are all mint bamboo. Okay. So, such as a peppermint, spearmint. Oh, you can smell it. Yeah. yeah. Can you, you can smell it. it. Yeah. Yeah. You can eat it. Okay, so but it's not as good as the spearmint, mm. but you can kind of a tire yeah. smell. Okay. Yeah, it does smell mint. Yeah, smell mint, right? <laughs> Another shrub, very well adapted to that disturb. In the late summer. They actually make more like just a what the, something like a horn uh, of the stack. The stack so it's called the stack on sumac. Okay, the cluster. Okay. It's kind of sour if you wanna taste it. Mm -hmm. uh, they also just often now then call this a boy's called lemonade <laughs> because uh, you just uh, take this that the fruit here and the soap in the water mm -hmm. and it actually kind of but there's a lot of it here and you gotta put the sugar in there it tastes like it just about that oh, wow. because it's sour and this is native yeah, yeah. It's native, but also <laughs> what is this here this this yeah like this is when they actually do the restore that they actually do not want to have a soil erosion so we erode into the lake so this is actually coconut fiber Ah. Okay. So by doing it, this is a degradable, 
Uh -huh. So as a temporary fix, they just put here just the, the, the erosion prevention, but they do not want to have that in the permanent. So eventually this will actually now degrade and just decompose and will right, disappear right. in maybe in next cool. year. Willow is about flowering, and yes, 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 eventually they're gonna produce this kind of like cottonwood. And so you see some of those just the, uh, the fruit, actually, you see? It's the same stuff with the cottonwood, okay. right? Like uh, all the cottonwood, those what you see, the kind of seeds are actually blowing in the wind, right? Okay. Yeah. Because they ain't the same family. So, so in June, it looks like it's yeah. snowing. It's snowing. Yes, mainly from the cotton wood, but, but also willow. Too. Okay. Yeah, willow. They do willow the same thing. The same thing. No willows do the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they What's do going the same in our yard? Ah. Oh, yeah, what are these purple ones? Ah, ah that is the, again another uh, exotic plant. Okay, but this is also just the, uh, it's called a creeping charlie. Okay, uh, that is the uh, same family with the mint. Okay. Oh. So you can actually touch it, okay, as a square stem. Yeah, we have these in our yard. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird. Okay, yes, you touch it, a square stem, right? And then usually those mint family, it has actually five parts in the petal, okay, two lower leaves, okay, and we have one, two, three upper leaves. That is very, all the mint has this kind of a floral structure two lower leaves, okay, and the three just upper leaves, and then you got a smell again. Okay? It has some scent here. And so this one's edible too, right. then, or? Yeah, it's edible. Yeah, right. yeah if you want it, you, you've got to just uh, strain it, or you can just uh, boil it for 30 seconds, strain it. Actually, it may taste better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But not for long, just maybe just uh, ah. 30 seconds, no longer than a minute. Yeah, and the strength, uh -huh. behavior. Usually, they are not necessarily mom and dad. Okay. Usually, all those they adopt, they yeah, they, 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 they all take care of it, just oh. all of them. Yeah, so there's more just communal, just the real. Yeah. That, that is very much a characteristic of those Canadian, Canadian kids. You see that? Wild radish here. Yeah, this is wild radish. Oh, wild radish? Yep. In yellow. Can you eat that too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a, you know, grown. So in the early spring, actually, before they just grow this big, okay, you take that, you can actually also eat the root. Yeah. Yeah, so all those radish family, it has four petals. Gotta, can you count? Yeah. Right? All the radish family has a four petals. Yeah. So do you want to pick it before it flowers? Oh yeah, just the, once they pop out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And you just get a spade and you also just get the root. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit bitter, but again, soak in the water mm -hmm. for a while. And take some bitterness out. And again, you have to, now in this case, you have to boil it. Okay. Uh, maybe about the 30 seconds for the leafy part, okay, and then maybe two, three minutes for the just grow. Okay, it's tasty it, because it is actually kind of the same taste of what those are cabbage mm, okay. because they're in the same family. Mm -hmm. Should you soak it in colder, warm water? Does it not matter? What? Yeah, in cold water. Cold? So, yeah. Uh, I'm Jack Slimsky, but the Wolf Lake Guard is the group um, that we're trying to organize to just clean up little areas around Wolf Lake that, and just raise awareness about things going on in Wolf Lake and get people to come out and like you know care about the lake and realize that it's here and that it needs protection. It needs